All right, hopefully we are live. Just kind of redid some stuff with my setup here. So uh, looks like we are good. Okay, well, um, I don't have a lot of uh, official announcements. Um, so nothing super important. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the state of houses and uh, some of the house cultural stuff. Um, just kind of something to talk about, basically. So, um, number one, of course, if you're not aware, the number one guy in terms of all cultural stuff, so I'm talking events and festivals, whether that be stuff like the clan anniversary, Yule, or the more specific ones, like the little feast days we have, uh, family days and such. Now, we have people that put on these, these events specifically, like, for example, the, you know, the Verlings, of course, are in charge of Verling Day, but the number one uh guy to talk to if you're talking about events or cultural stuff or house and family stuff is going to start with an arian he's the vice admiral um and that is kind of his uh his purview so um if you do have questions about that kind of stuff um he would not be a bad guy to talk to but of course if your question is more specific like for example um about your house uh you might want to talk to the lord or lady of your house who's in charge of your house or if you have questions about your family talk to the Earl or Countess of your family, for example. Um, so something we've been kind of trying to do um, relatively behind the scenes is sort of um, check in with uh, the different house uh, leadership of each house and kind of see about uh, goals, uh, what we can do to bring back some of the smaller houses, get them um, healthy again, um, and also... Uh, things like traditions uh, for each house is something else uh, that we are looking at. Um, so I can mostly myself speak for just uh, house stippity. Um, obviously, we have the luxury of having a ton of members. So that that does help a lot because uh, that pretty much guarantees you're going to have people to take part in some of your traditions and events. And also, um, some of those people will be uh, very interested in uh, in the house itself, um, which has been um, cool to see. So um, I definitely appreciate those people who are taking an active interest in uh, house stippity, who are in house stippity. Um, but something that we've been kind of looking at behind the scenes as well um, is uh, night orders. So um, just to kind of recap or uh, give sort of a you know, an update on where we are right now. So currently, um, the House Commander has their active night order. Now, I, I should preface this by saying that these are all under the umbrella of Special Forces units, so technically that's the correct term, but so many people are used to the term night order, and it is kind of a cool term, and it meshes better with the House uh, uh, kind of uh, theme that we have going with Lords and earls and houses and families and coats of arms and all that kind of you know you kind of have that medieval anglo-saxon crusade or whatever you want to call it kind of uh feel that a lot of those terms tend to have um so uh as far as night orders uh, house commander um they have the the varger so currently the varger have both the the current uh varger as in a sort of a revival, a uh, version two of the Varger Order, and then the older order as well, the original House Commander Knights going back to the uh, Second Empire era-ish. Um, uh, so uh, you have um, those two for House Commander. For House Dippity, um, House Kilroy and House Dane, there are the old school Knight Orders. So there is... Um, the Rangers of House Dane, the Jade Falcons of House Kilroy, and the White Knights of House Dippity. Now, how those work right now is they're all classified as special forces units using the current modern-day nomenclature. But all three of those orders are basically retired, which basically means they are not uh, active. Um, now, that doesn't mean that the people in them are not knights um, or anything of that sort, um, but it becomes more of a badge of honor than a job, essentially is a, um, concise way of putting it. It's not to say they cannot be revived, and that's one of the things that we've been looking at with some of the houses is, um, can we find a way to reactivate the Rangers of House Dane or the Jada Falcons of House Kilroy, um, it would be cool, I think, for starters, those houses have to get probably a few more members, but, 
Um, I'm certainly open to it. It's also kind of up to uh, to Athvaler and Gig who are the lords of those two houses, to um, make that call. Um, and as of yet, they have not uh, done so, which is up to them. But um, I did kind of, and I've kind of talked to all the house leadership and family leadership um, previously, but um, I feel uh, pretty capable in terms of coming up with ideas um, for things like night orders and the house and family traditions and such. Uh, not to say that I have unlimited ideas, but um, I'm certainly happy and would be excited to uh, kind of work with um house and family leadership to kind of expand the sort of thematic or cultural side of these uh, houses and families, um, especially um, Warden Dane Kilroy, of course, Blitz Creek Thief. If we actually get active leadership of either of those two houses, it would be cool as well. Um, but uh, I think uh, for me, for those two, it doesn't make as much as I did release new coats of arms for them. I think for the most part, um, it's not very wise to sink too much work into those houses until it's clear that there is a payoff in terms of there are active members who um, can appreciate it and would like to see kind of attention and, and uh, paid to and work put into um, their houses, which is uh, one of the main benefits that um, uh, doing this kind of work has. Um, so it kind of leaves us with, um, Warden, Dane, and Kilroy, which, uh, myself and Anarian have kind of been talking to them behind the scenes. Mostly Anarian, I'm kind of, um, you know, offering my, uh, help as much as anyone needs, but I don't also don't want to, um, step on people's toes or kind of, um, you know, take them out of the loop in that regard. Um, so I've mostly myself been working on house dippity stuff, um, recently. We're, has been a lot going on behind the scenes for anybody especially in our house, who is uh, curious. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, I think the consensus at this point is um, basically, I can say, I think with certainty, we're not going to be reviving uh, the White Knights of House Dippity, at least not any time in the near future. Um, rather, we are really looking at potentially a new Knight Order. Um, and kind of as part of the efforts to develop that, um, we are also kind of re-examining the traditions of House Dippity. So the ancestral names, um, you can check these out, by the way. They're in the House Dippity subform on the forums, and they're pinned in the House Dippity channel, in our chat channel. Um, there's a some blurbs about them pinned, but there's also a link to what's called the Library of House Dippity, which has all the links and information you could possibly want, as well as other stuff like older lineage charts and coats of arms, uh, other information. So if you are at all interested in your house... Check out that link. Again, that is pinned in the House Dippity channel. Most of this stuff is accessible on the forums in the House Dippity subforum as well. Um, but uh, pinned as well is the House Dippity Relics page. You may already notice some stuff changing on that. Feel free to check that out if you want to. Um, so I want to say I've talked about this before, but if I have, it's been a while. Um, so the, the Relics... Basically, what we're doing right now, um, there was initially some thought we were kind of looking at, okay, is there a way that we can tie the relics into a knight order? And I think we've pretty much settled on no. I mean, there's ways to do it, yes, but we're probably not going to do that. Um, I think the link will simply be that it will be the knight order uh, and its members that are in charge of the relics. So essentially updating the spreadsheet um people that are that are pursuing the relics can con contact any member of the knight order to kind of say oh i've completed this or that trial can i have that updated where am i at in my progress oh i've completed everything am i done kind of checking and um, maintaining them in that regard um i mean there's more mostly small scale stuff to do like sending people the avatar links and um, creating avatars for people if they would like um the relics, for those unfamiliar, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with them, are um, basically represented visually by a special border around your avatar. Um, so currently, um, you may already notice there are some additional relics on the spreadsheet. It's kind of a spoiler uh, right now. There, we're kind of in the progress of, or in the process, excuse me, of um, updating kind of the lore. I like to. Um, we had the idea of adding like long form lore, like a story for each relic. I do think that would be cool, but 
again, I think it's um it's too much work to to feasibly do, um at least currently. Maybe somewhere down the road we can start to think about doing something like that. But currently, the goal is to get these uh, new get all the relics um kind of ready to go. Um, so currently, if you did want to pursue a relic right now, we are still going to use the previous system, which essentially, again for those unfamiliar, just involves um, there's lots of different tasks you can complete from recruiting a member to earning a mark to getting promoted to writing a story to becoming an earl to earning an emblem or a title. Um, you can complete those multiple times as well. You can, you know, you get X points for each recruit instead of points. We call it veneration. And you have to achieve a certain amount of veneration to get the relic of your choosing. Different relics require different total amounts. So something, a relic from like a saint, for example, requires a lot. A relic from a member who had no title um, might not be uh, not not require as much. Um, again, all all the specifics of that are pinned in the house tippity chat um, under relics. So just check all those out. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff, but that's essentially how relics work currently. Um, the changes that I had in mind and that uh, myself and the other um, the rest of the leadership of the of the house have talked about is um, trying to. So my goals for the relics are a to try to decrease uh, the the amount of just like uh, tallying up stuff um, because they require a lot of veneration to earn. So sometimes they take people quite a long time, and I think it's easy to lose motivation if your first goal and your only goal is the total veneration. What does that mean? It means I got to recruit like twenty people or thirty people. I got to get ten marks. I got to do all this different stuff or any combination of those. It's going to take a long time unless you're like an old school member who already has a lot of this stuff. So you're going to be like three quarters of the way there already. Um, it's hard to see it to, to stay motivated for something like that, even if you're initially excited about it. I think that's a downside, and it's also a downside that um, if you are an old member, like I said, you show up, you basically just get handed a relic, which is kind of lame. I mean, sure, credit to you for all the work you've done previously, but you should still have to do something to actually earn this. It's supposed to be something that's earned and, and feels good to actually achieve. So um, basically what we're doing is we're keeping the current veneration trial system, but that's only going to be the first step. Um, now, to compensate for, for that, we're going to lower all the veneration requirements as well. So that first step is going to be a lot smaller. It's still going to be similar and familiar for people that have done it before, but it's just going to be a smaller part of it, um, and it should be able to achieve that much quicker. Um, and then there's going to be at least one and potentially two more steps, depending on the relic. So the second step that you have to do for any relic you want is what we're calling the runic trial. So just earning that veneration, those are called trials. Then there's each relic has a special set of three trials that you have to complete called runic trials, because each one of them is based upon a specific uh, rune, um, of which there are, I have to count now, uh, 16. Um, and so each rune has a specific trial, and each relic has three runes. So basically, every single relic is going to have its own unique combination of three specific trials that you have to do. Where Those are the runic trials, whereas the regular trials are just... I mean, you can do any combination you want. You can recruit 100 members and do nothing else if you really want. <laughs> it would be unlikely, but technically that would, that would, that would fulfill it. And by the way, you're not going to have to recruit literally 100. That, that would be uh, way too many. But what I mean is uh, you have that freedom to kind of pick and choose how you want to do it. The runic trials are the, the more limiting thing in that there's going to be three specific things that you have to do um, in order to... Um, acquire the relic now so that's currently something we're working on because um it's a bit tricky because we want to make sure that the runic trials are something that anybody can do but that they're not just meaningless pointless too easy stupid or not interesting so for example uh one idea that we brainstormed is to create or update um a lineage chart for your family um, another one is to start a rough platoon for the clan and lead it for a month and get one recruit. Or another one is to uh, choose any WA feast day and host a special event on that day. Um, here's another one. Create a representation of your WA self in a game of your choice. Provide information, screenshots, etc. of your character and any deeds you accomplish as yourself in this game. So one of the ideas with this is also to kind of have 
just more interesting things to do than just recruit a member or get a promotion. Something with more flavor that hopefully is more fun for people as well. So those are just a couple examples. Right now we've got about two dozen or so ideas, working on some more um, of the runic trial. So for a lot of relics, that's going to be all you have to do is just the initial veneration stuff, like get X, you know, accumulate enough points between all the categories, like earning marks, titles, recruits, getting recruits promoted, getting a promotion, etc., um, defeating foes in honorable combat, um, and so on. And then every relic is going to have three of those runic trials. Um, and then for some relics, that's going to be all you need. And if you look on the relic page, um, if you have access to that in the house deputy chat, there's this, uh, there's a tab on the first page that says status and that, um, it, also explains this at the very top, but the status indicates whether the runic trials are enough to get it. So if a relic is listed as vaulted, what that means is that um, in the lore setting of WA, we have this relic, it's in good condition, but nobody is currently using it or serving as its guardian, um, as we say. Um, which basically means all you have to do is first complete the veneration to basically prove yourself worthy of entering the vaults of uh, Laudle H, and then secondly, complete the three runic trials associated with the relic you want, and there you go. You get the relic. But there's a few relics that are either lost because of lore reasons, they've been, you know, carried off by, by demons or rebels, or they've been broken in battle, that kind of thing. So lost or broken basically mean the same thing. Um, they just mean that there is a third step that has to be completed because, okay, you earned the right to enter the vault and now you've earned the right to have the relic, but the relic is either not there or it's broken into pieces. So what do we do about that? Well, there is a third step, which is called either a reclamation or a restoration. It's going to be the same trial either way, but each relic has a unique trial, one trial you have to do, um, for the reclamation or restoration. Um, the one caveat being there's going to be three options for every relic. You only need to do one of them. There's going to be three options, so hopefully enough that anybody can find one that they can do. Um, and that's that final step you have to complete to get the relic. So it might sound like a lot, um, but honestly, uh, it's I think it's, pretty, it's a pretty good middle ground. Um, because currently, relics require a lot for the average member, and I think too much is, is the issue. Um, you know, like the Hammer of Sanctifica requires 250 veneration, and it gives you half a point... Per recruit, one point for promoted recruit, two points per promotion. So you can see how this can require a lot. I mean, sure, if you've already become an earl, uh, earned some, earned three emblems, and you're a knight, oh, now you're halfway there. But most of that stuff is really hard to do unless you're an old member that already accomplished all that stuff. So you can kind of see how getting that many points is too much. So probably what we're gonna do is reduce these numbers by at least something like fifty percent. I mean, we'll kind of see what everybody thinks and, and kind of workshop it, but um, decrease that by a lot. So then mostly what you'll be doing, aside from just, you know, a few odds and ends, is the three runic trials, and then if necessary, that final trial, um, which of which you'll have, you'll have three to pick from which one you want to do um, to get the relic. So um, it's not going to be easy, but I think hopefully it will be more fun because each relic has, is, is more unique. Um, currently there's nothing unique about them other than that they have a different border color. Uh, you know, they just require different amounts of points to get essentially. So I think that giving each one, uh, their unique kind of capstone trials, uh, will be cool. And you can actually see a spoiler for a couple of those. If you, if you go through the different tabs, the different pages on the relic spreadsheet, you can see that we do have a few of them already, uh, planned out and laid out there as far as what the um, what the runic trials are going to be or what the reclamation trials are going to be. Um, reclamation slash restoration trial. Okay, so hopefully that gives anybody not in the house insight into one of our cool traditions that currently exists, exists and is being revamped. And if you're in the house, uh, hopefully, yeah, you're interested in relics or... Uh, um, yeah, hopefully that is helpful to just kind of know that update. That's a big thing we've been working on behind the scenes again, um, as well as the, uh, night order. Um, yeah. So there's some information on relics and, uh, I will go ahead and sign off, be available for my office hours, uh, shortly. <laughs>